affecting harder problems like the one we worked from Rentland or, you know, the geodesic problems in the current homework set. Uh. Let's see here. Now, as soon as I write the test, I'll send you guys an I send you guys another email to tell you what I'm putting on the take home. The take home test will not be a soul crushing experience for you. It should be a perhaps two hours worth of calculation that I will just collect Tuesday. Basically, the point is I want to make sure that you have enough time on the test to work problems with thinking, as opposed to just rushing through and showing me you know the computations like I usually do. I am. Um, I'm hoping I can ask you actually a somewhat interesting question on the test, but don't worry, hopefully not too interesting. Just the right kind of interesting is what I'm looking for. Let's see here, let's go back to So I asked you guys to learn how to find the matrix of linear transformation. I might come back to that, um, you know, since I think you guys understand it now, I'd like to reward you for that. Um, goodness gracious, problem 10, right? That, that would be mean to ask that on the test, but I would want you to use it on the test, right? So you can assume this for sure if we have a matrix problem under the Frobenius norm, of course. Hey, many of you guys skipped this problem. This was actually an easy problem, parts of it anyway. I, the triangle inequality is a drag in a lot of cases to think about, but that's actually not too hard. Um, a couple of you got problem 12. Good, I was happy with that. Um, let's see here. Problem 13 is a great test question. It's, it's nice and simple and it really tests inner products and norms both at the same time. There's a lot of goodness in problem 13 as I think about a possible test question. Same goes for 14. Um, 14 actually is not too crazy for the test. That'd be on the harder end of things, but... Um, hmm. How would you guys show something's a closed set? Right, you can show that the complement is open is one way. Um, you could also show that um, uh, all its boundary points are inside the set is another way you could do it. I didn't advertise that as the definition of closed, but it's an equivalent definition. If you can show that the boundary of the set is inside the set, that also shows it's closed. Um, right, yeah, that's, if it contains all its limit points, but I have um, not dwelled too much on sequential definitions in here, so I'm staying away from that at the moment, but th that's also true, yeah. Are you guys good on coordinates? Do you understand how to find the coordinates with respect to a basis? I mean, I don't think I'll ask you about coordinate change, so I'm, I'm not super fond of these questions for this test because I said that I'm not going to test on coordinate change, but I might want to test you on just coordinates. That, that would be fair. Coordinate change is just harder some reason. Any question about mission one? Um, I don't really expect you to know the definition of tensor and direct product of matrices. If it came up, I would reproduce the definition for the sake of the problem. So, okay. I mean, when I, at the moment at least, I have to remind myself what the definition is before I do problems, so I I don't think it's fair for me to expect you guys to have it memorized. <laughs> Although you do have a sheet of notes, so it wouldn't be crazy. But anyway, you can put other things on your sheet than this. That's my point. Not too many of you found these, though. These are fun. Patterns. Yeah, these patterns. I mean, some of you, everybody found something in here, but not everybody found all of them. I mean, I can search Wikipedia, so that's how I found them. But um, <laughs> Wikipedia, I tell you, it's not, it's important to look at Wikipedia. It gets you uh, into the bigger sphere of ideas sometimes. 
These are interesting. There's something deeper here to learn that I don't quite have my hands around yet. But that's not an appropriate thing for a test review. So let me go on here. We were just starting to work through this, weren't we? Yeah. Mm-hmm, problem 10, it's kind of a drag. Let's see here. The um, completeness argument, Some, I mean, I might ask about 15. That That's possible that on the harder side of things, but that's, it's, I would like you to kind of know the argument to show that the vector space is complete from, you know, uh, using completeness of the reals. Assuming completeness of the reals, how can you show a given vector space is complete, right? The um, name of the game is we look at a Cauchy sequence and then we basically show that if the vector Cauchy sequence is, is Cauchy, that net will imply that the components of the vector are also Cauchy sequences, but the component sequences are real sequences. Hence, by the completeness of the reals, they converge. So I did Rn, I think, in class. And this is the matrix, which you had as homework. So we've, we spent a fair amount of time on that. It's, it's not an unreasonable question. Remember, I used a very similar argument to show that the power series for the matrix exponential converged. I showed that its norm was, um, you know, I, I used the Cauchy, Cauchy argument there. All right. Um, let me get to mission two. Oh, I hate why did I why did I offer do you do a review for you guys? I hate reviews. I should have just said go study. Um, oh, my solution for problem twenty two. It's uh, I've mixed the S and the T. Don't don't. Um, So everybody's good on, and by the way, like uh, for sure I'm asking a question like number 20, 21, some of these, th I mean, these linearization questions, I got to ask about that on the test, right? I mean, come on. And um, my point was problem 22, I have an error in my solution, which I'm not going to fix. Oh, he's not looking at me. Um, like, I just, <laughs> see, that problem has TS, but I put ST which means my column two and three are juxtaposed from your column two and three. So just to warn you, that's not a terribly deep error. It's just me. And it, the, but the order is, there is an order. It's not up for grabs. When I write H of RST, that means that R is the first variable, T is the second variable, and S is the third variable. So my answer currently is wrong as an answer to the problem. It's right for this. Is this, in fact, is equal to that. Whereas what you guys wrote in your solution is equal to the other thing. By the way, I should have your uh, homeworks graded by tomorrow. I had hoped to have them graded today, but I forgot to bring your homeworks home last night. About midnight, it hit me. I don't have your homeworks. Ah! And so here we are. Like I said, you guys are pretty good on this one, I think. Yeah? The con differentiable implies continuous question. But there's something in there that you guys all glossed over, which is why is it, why is it that a linear transformation is continuous, right? That was one of the things I put on my list to be able to show. I give both arguments here. I show you to show that um, DFA, I mean, so really you could replace this lemma by just showing a linear transformation is continuous. I'm just interested in that particular linear transformation. But So I give the proof down here for an arbitrary linear transformation, L. And so one way you could look at it is, well, it's got a formula, which is a matrix times coordinates, right? So each component is just a polynomial in the coordinates, right? And so those basically are, are continuous. So it's just each component function is continuous. So by the vector li limit theorem, it's continuous. Now that assumes what? That assumes that you know that the coordinate functions are continuous. Could you prove the coordinate functions are continuous? f of v equals to xi. Oops, sorry. x of i, where v is equal to x1 v1 plus da 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 plus xn vn, right? So this would be the ith 
coordinate function. Can you prove that that's continuous? An arbitrary point? Can you show that the limit as, you know, V goes to V naught of F of V is equal to F of V naught? So that epsilon would be greater than zero. I choose delta equal to epsilon and consider zero less than um, norm of, and this is in a norm linear space, of course. F is mapping from the norm linear space V to the reals, right? So V minus V naught less than delta, right? But that implies what? That the absolute value of um, x sub i is less than the norm of x1 v1 plus xn vn, right? Which is what? Did I do something wrong? I might have done something wrong. I mean, that's true, but I'm not sure that's what I want. Yeah, that, that, I think that's true, but it's not relevant, right? So consider, we're going to get exactly what you're saying, Dan. So uh, absolute value of f of v minus f of v naught would be what? It'd be x sub i. Yeah, or however, however we want to denote that. Or, ah. oh well, I made my own notation, now I have to deal with it. And of course that is less than or equal to the norm of V minus V naught. I say of course, but in fact I'm assuming that my basis has a special property, right? This is assuming that, you know, the V1, Vn has this property. I'm sorry, Bradley. I think I have failed you again. Yep. It's not too late, though. <laughs> Here's what you've been missing. Sorry. Um, man, where'd Lorenzo go? Okay, so then that is, of course, less than, right? That's less than delta, which is equal to epsilon. And there you have it. That proves that the limit as v goes to v naught of f of v is equal to f of v naught, which shows you that the ith coordinate function is continuous. Now that, of course, assumes that we have a nice basis, right? If you don't have a nice basis, you can use the technique of problem 24 to extend this result to such a other coordinate system that doesn't have this nice, the components are, the length of a component is smaller than the length of the whole vector property. Yeah. It's got to be a technical name for such a basis. I don't know. So that's the one way. Um, well, that's not the way I did this, though, right? What did I do here? This, I just, I let m be the maximum of the absolute value of all the possible matrix entries, right? And I use that m to put a bound on the value of L of x. And then that allows me to, um, in the next, next page, to actually show an epsilon delta argument to show continuity directly. Here it is. I choose delta equal to epsilon divided by m n m and d -d 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 epsilon. So there actually is something to do there, right, to prove that linear transformations are continuous, but it is in fact, of course, true. And in the context of a larger problem, you're allowed to assume it, but it is something I might ask you. And I would be rather annoyed if I asked you to show linear transformations are continuous and you give me back the answer linear transformations are continuous. That was the result that we had. Yes, that's true. But if I ask the question as a standalone question, of course, I want to see some evidence <laughs> thereof. Um, but there are two ways to do that, right? Either by that epsilon delta argument or by the, by the limit laws. I'll try to be quite explicit about what I want. You should always ask me in the test if you're not sure, OK?
make sure you look at problem 25. I think some of you, I haven't, I'm, I'm just about to grade that, so I'm not sure what the status is of the class on this one. But it's actually really not that bad. You just have to sort through the definition. So the definition we gave a partial derivative was you plug in a line that goes with direction vector vi, basically, into the domain, which is x plus t vi. You differentiate with respect to t. Plug t equal to 0, that's the partial derivative. So how do you differentiate a real value function? Well, that's a real value function. So you can just differentiate it. And anyway, and then this was just the chain rule similarly. So do I think everybody needs to look at that, that solution there. I, I haven't graded yours yet. I'm just guessing. Well, sorry, I'm a little bit frantic. I'm always frantic in test reviews. I'm never going to say everything I said up to this point in the stupid review day. So I don't know why we have review days. I should stop having review days. I don't like them. Oh, you disagree. You like them. Oh, OK, well. <clears throat> One more second, humor me. I told Bradley we'd answer his questions if he sent them to us. Let's see if he sent me a question. Ah, no, that's not what I want. How do you? Oh, that one. Nah, no, nothing so interesting. All right. I expect great things from you guys. I want this to be a test to remember.